Hey everybody, it's Chris from Xano, and I'm super excited today to talk to you about database triggers. Database triggers are pieces of logic that can execute when something changes inside of one of your Xano database tables. These could happen when a record is added, when a record is edited, deleted, or when the entire contents of the table are cleared. Database triggers can also contain custom filters to only run on records that match certain conditions. Using triggers in Xano can be a fantastic alternative to things like background tasks, and they can really help promote efficiency and true real-time functionality when building your backend with Xano. I'm going to walk you through how to use database triggers, and I'll show you a real-world example of when you might use triggers in your own application. So let's hop over to Xano and take a look. To add a database trigger, you'll first navigate to the table that you want to add the trigger to, and you'll click the menu in the upper right hand corner and choose triggers. This opens up the database triggers menu. We'll click this blue button to add a new database trigger. First, let's give our trigger a name. I'll just call this my first trigger and we'll give it a description. We're going to want this to be active and we can choose the data sources that the trigger runs on or we can leave this blank and it will execute against all data sources it is important to note though that triggers only execute on your live branch so if you have triggers in another branch that you're working on that is not live those triggers will not execute until those changes are pushed to your live branch we can then choose the actions that the trigger will run on so again we have the opportunity to run the trigger when a record is added updated, deleted, or when the table is truncated, which means that all of the contents are cleared. Let's go ahead and run this trigger anytime a record is added or updated. And then finally, our last option, we can add custom filters to this trigger. And this is the same thing that you see when you're building custom queries in a query all records function. We can add conditional statements here to define when the trigger should actually execute. We're all done here, so we can click the save button. And we see our trigger right here and we can click on it to enter the function stack for the trigger. Database triggers have four standard inputs. We have new, old, action, and data source. New is the contents of the new or updated record. Old will be the contents of the old version of the record if a record is being updated, or it will be the deleted record if this trigger is running on a delete action. The action input just lists the action that the trigger is running on. And then finally, we have the data source, which just logs the data source that the trigger is being executed on. You'll also notice that triggers don't have a response because there's not really anywhere for the response to go. For this example, I'm just going to send the data that is running through this trigger to an external API so we can see those contents. So I'm going to add a step to my function stack. This is going to be an external API request. I'll paste my URL in there. We'll change the method to post. And then I'll go down here to my parameters and I will add the data that I want to see in the request on the other side. So we'll add our new and we'll add our old. And let's go ahead and add the action in the data source as well. There we go. We have our external API request all set up and we can save that. We can publish our changes. If we want to test this, we can of course go to the table or if you prefer, you can still use run and debug just like you would in any other function stack. But for this example, I'm going to go back to the table and I'm going to add a new record. So we have a new record added here and let's just add something in the data source column. We'll just call this test. Because if you remember, our trigger is set to run on inserts and updates. We can see that here. So that means that we should see two API requests. And we can see here on the right, the data that came through our triggers. So there is the record that we just created. And then here is the new record after we updated it. So you can see data source does not have a value here, but here under our new value, it does. It is truly that simple to start using database triggers inside of Xano. Database triggers can also maintain request history if you choose for it to do so. 
so you can go back and see when those triggers were executed and what actually happened. Now let's talk about a more real world example of when you might use database triggers in your application. So I have this log table here. It has the new old action and data source, just like the inputs from the trigger. I'm actually going to delete this record that we created earlier. And so what I want to use this table for is to log database actions. So in all of these other tables, maybe I want the user table to be logged in my log table when something changes on that user table. So I can click on the user table. We'll click the three dots up here and we'll go to triggers. Let's add a database trigger. I'm going to call this log actions. We'll let it run on all data sources. And I'm going to say I want this to run on inserts, updates, deletes, and truncates. We want this to run on everything. We'll go ahead and save that. Let's enter into that trigger. And in this function stack for the trigger, we just need one step and we're going to be adding a record to our log table. And we can see here that Xano has already mapped our inputs to the corresponding database fields here. So all we really need to do is save this, publish our changes. And now when we go back to the user table, let's go ahead and edit the email address of this user. So before it was chris at email.com and now we're doing chris at test.com. And now we can immediately head over to the log table and we can see there's the contents of the new record. And here's the contents of the record before it was edited. And then we have our action and our data source there as well. Now, one of the biggest advantages to using database triggers is that these triggers will execute regardless of where the edit happens. So these edits could happen via an API, a custom function, a background task, or just by you modifying database fields manually those triggers will always run. And that helps ensure that you have true consistency and always have real-time updates when you need things to happen based on changes made inside of a table. Using database triggers in your application opens up a whole new world of possibility. It is really cool. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you found it helpful. Be sure to subscribe for more Xano content coming in the future. We'll definitely have some more videos about how to use database triggers in new and exciting ways. I want to pose you with a little bit of a challenge before I go. If you are using background tasks in your application, and we see this all the time in our support inbox where a user is querying against potentially a very large table as often as every five seconds because they need to either track changes in that table or they need certain things to happen based on updates that are made inside of that table. Now, this totally works. It's just fine to do it that way but there is a consideration to be made for querying your database that often and that quickly. It's definitely not the most optimal way of doing it. Database triggers are a perfect use case for a scenario like that. And it will be an improved experience because you have more real-time updates to your data instead of just querying on a specific schedule. So if that sounds like it applies to you, or if you have another idea for how to use database triggers in your application, let us know down in the comments below or on the Xano community. Thanks again for watching and we will see you in the next one.